This screencast is on atoms, elements, and isotopes. Unless you've been living in a fallout shelter, you probably recognize some sort of nuclear uh, symbol, which is just, just an atom here. And this is the Atomic Energy Commission symbol. This is just an atom with the nucleus here composed of neutrons and protons. And you have electrons spinning around. Uh, same right here. This is a lithium atom. Happens to have three electrons. Uh, we have three protons, and then there's actually four neutrons here. And we'll talk a bit more about that. Perhaps you've seen the movie The Watchmen or read the comic strip, and Dr. Manhattan is shown here with the element hydrogen inscribed on his forehead. Here it is right here. And it just is the hydrogen atom. This is the nucleus with the electron spinning around. Here's the element in the periodic table, hydrogen. The atomic weight is 1.008 hydrogen. and has the atomic number of one, which means that's how many protons it has. And this number distinguishes, distinguishes all elements from each other. So as you go through the table, uh, if the element is 10, it has 10 protons. And then we have a graphic here representing the hydrogen atom, and here's one proton. This one has zero neutrons. That happens to be an isotope. And then you have the electron spinning around here. And let's talk about isotopes. Here's the same uh, atom of hydrogen, the element right here. And an atom is just the smallest particle of that substance that is pure, and then the subatomic particles would include the electrons, the neutrons, and the protons. And we're going to view all of these right here. First, uh, we know it's one proton, and an isotope is just uh, a version of the atom that contains a different number of neutrons. So all atoms of hydrogen will contain one proton. They can have different neutrons, as shown here, zero for this isotope, one for this isotope, and if the atom is balanced, meaning electrically charged, uh, protons are positive, uh, electrons are negative, neutrons are zero balance. If it's balanced, meaning it has the same number of protons and electrons, there's zero charge. Hence, uh, balanced atoms have the same number of protons as the number of electrons. Let's get to the isotope, isotopes, how they describe them. Here's the hydrogen isotope, and it has one proton, one proton. And then this number up here represents the combined number of protons and neutrons. So this has one proton, zero neutrons for number one. This has one proton, one neutron for number two. And this asterisk right here just means that this atomic weight range, which is the accepted way of describing it now, ranges from 1.00784 to 1.00811. You don't have to know that for this class. It's just a new way of representing this, meaning that this element, when we find it in Earth's crust or in the universe, occurs naturally between these weight ranges. This is actually a measured number. People go out and measure this value. Uh, in this class, we use four significant figures for every single element. If you use the element in a calculation, it has four significant figures, and it's a measured value. Let's look at another isotope uh, and another element. Here's the symbol we just left our, front, our first page with, which is lithium. On the chart here, if you look at your chart, this color actually means it's in a certain group. And here is the element's um, atomic weight or atomic mass. And if you look at this, you'll see that the 
atomic number is three, and if it had the same number of neutrons as protons, the atomic weight would be six for all elements. But there are some isotopes that are a little bit heavier, and when we take a look at these, we'll get them spinning. Uh, some lithium atoms have three neutrons, some have four. That gives us an atomic mass of between six and seven. When we take an average weight of all of these, this number tends to be closer to seven and six, so there's probably, when you look at it, more isotopes with seven in than six. Again, all this means here is lithium isotope, and this is three six, three protons, and a combined number of six for protons and neutrons. And over here we have combined number of seven protons and neutrons. Let's look at carbon. Carbon happens to be interesting. A lot of stuff that we do in chemistry is based on carbon. In fact, all of organic chemistry is based on carbon. The way uh, these atomic weights were developed is based on carbon. Uh, the isotope carbon has six protons, six neutrons, so it's 612 carbon, as referred to as carbon-12 is the isotope. So we are using the combined protons and neutrons. And the way they define these weights on the table, which are atomic mass units, AMUs, which you'll have to know, is one AMU is one twelfth the mass of carbon-12. That's kind of a hard way to remember it. If you remember that carbon-12 has a combined number of six protons and neutrons in its nucleus, there's 12 of these little subatomic particles. Uh, you divide them by 12 and you get one apiece, and that's one AMU. So it's one twelfth the mass of carbon-12. Carbon-12 is equal to 12 AMU. And carbon here is equal to... 12.01 uh, AMU, and that's how atomic mass units are defined. In order to remember protons, neutrons, and electrons and isotopes, there's just four things you should really remember. Protons are always equal to the atomic number. In neutral atoms, protons are equal to electrons. In neutrons plus protons determine the mass in AMU, and the atomic weight or mass, we'll use these interchangeably, is the weighted average of isotopes. And we'll talk about weighted averages in a minute. So when you look at carbon-12 right here, uh, most of the elements we find uh, out there, um, this is a kind of weighted average. Most of the isotopes of carbon are carbon-12, and then there's a very few of them that are carbon-13. So 99% carbon-12, 1% carbon-13. And here's our references here. And let's just look back to lithium and see that it still makes sense. Here's uh, lithium-6, lithium-7, and we know that uh, the number of electrons spinning around here is three, it's balanced, and just the nucleus contains either six or seven uh, subatomic particles. And another thing you might want to just look at uh, and keep in mind is these are different shells we have spinning here. This one will always have a maximum of two, and the second shell will always have a maximum of eight. But uh, these electrons right here are just three spinning around. So let's look at uh, weighted average. Um, this is Wolfram Alpha. If we just look up lithium isotopes, it tells us what percentage is available of lithium-7 and then lithium-6. And for brevity, they leave out uh, the number of protons, which would be three here. And they have some other stuff called unstable elements, which we're not concerned with in this class. So we pull this out. That's what this means right here. 92.4% and then 7.6% uh, for lithium-6 versus lithium-7. And if we take a look at the calculation for lithium, we're going to determine the weighted average of the masses. So 
It's actually uh, quite straightforward. We just take the atomic mass units, which are right here from your periodic table. That's the atomic weight. We place them right here. And we know uh, from Wolfram or somewhere else that uh, this particular element is 92.4% lithium-7. And then this one is 7.5% lithium-6. So we multiply these numbers, divide by 100, and you get the actual weights. Then when you add these weights, you get the atomic mass units, and this calculation checks itself. And that's how you determine a weighted average. A weighted average is used in this course repeatedly. So start looking at it initially, and then we'll review it again. Uh, of course, when working with percentages and we're adding numbers, you have to do it this way in order for it to work out. Let's take a look here at their, our last example. Uh, this is a little bit more noise going on, we'll call it. Uh, this is neon. Uh, neon's an interesting element. It's one of the noble gases. It's kind of an orange color, and you can reference it in our periodic table that we have in Sakai. Here's a simple graphic of neon. Note the shells. This is the first shell. That's the second shell. And then this, this is the nucleus. The isotopes are neon-20, neon-21, neon-22. And we can quickly determine by subtracting these numbers, 10, 10, 10. That's the number of protons. Subtract 20 from 10, that's the number of neutrons, 11 neutrons here, and then 12 neutrons here. All the electrons are still the same. It just varies the number of neutrons. Uh, as we get to the noble gases, this shell, this outer shell, is totally full of electrons. That's eight. That's how many it takes. And we'll talk about that a little bit later in this course. I hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching this screencast.